So you want to learn how to paint in Photoshop. Okay. Well, I'm going to take you through the steps of learning the software. This is for absolute beginners. Uh, it's just going to take baby steps teaching all the main things. I'm going to give you a bunch of tips as well. Uh, before you know it, you're going to be doing some pretty advanced stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to show you different things that you've never seen before. So in the meantime, we've got to get going. So let's go. Let's begin with opening up a file in Photoshop. So what you want to do is go File, New. Now when we come into this pop-up window, you have several options here. Um, first, it'll show you Recent tab. And with the Recent tab, what that's basically showing you is some of the uh, layouts that you've used recently uh, that you can go right back to um, and it's usually because it's something that you've been using uh, a lot for one particular project um, there's also you can have you can go under saved if there's different saved templates or various things like that that you might would need we have photo which is going to give you some presets that are uh, set up for photographers you see sometimes they'll have a plus sign there that will give you additional presets that you can use. We have print. Okay. And then we also have art and illustration, web, mobile, film, and uh, film and video. Primarily what I'm doing is um, illustration. Uh, and I'm also thinking about it from a standpoint of print illustration. But sometimes I'm doing things that will require me to work uh in a pixel based information uh, that would be specific towards let's say concept art or or uh, for film or animation now with this you don't necessarily have to go to any of those presets you can just come in and type in the numeric value that you would want here on the side and then you can see there's an orientation for a vertical uh, or horizontal layout uh, you could turn it into an artboard. That's something we'll discuss later on. You can type in the uh, pixel resolution. Uh, 300 is something that I typically use if I'm doing something with print. Uh, I do work higher resolutions than that as well. Um, but then we come down here. Now when we go to color mode, you can set this up right away to work with bitmap, grayscale, RGB, CMYK, or lab color. Lab color is something that if you're working in illustration digital painting, you're not really going to touch lab color. It's an advanced uh, uh, color mode that's specific for photographers and typically lab studios. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's an example of why you're not really going to use that. Now, I do use it for certain techniques, advanced techniques, which I will explain later on. But for now, uh, don't even worry about lab color. What you're typically going to be using is RGB or CMYK. If you want to do black and white, you would obviously choose grayscale. Now, there are benefits to working with RGB versus CMYK. Um, there are certain filters that you can only use with RGB color. CMYK will not have some of these filters. Um, also, another thing to think about is RGB color is specific towards web and screen work. CMYK is for print work. Now, I tend to work in RGB. Um, the reason why I work in RGB is because I usually will use Photoshop in conjunction with Corel Painter, uh, which is an RGB format uh, digital painting application. This allows me to go back and forth seamlessly without having color degradation. Then once I'm finished with the whole project, I'll bring it into Photoshop and I'll convert it to CMYK and send that out to print. Okay, so these are all things that I'll discuss later on uh, in depth. Uh, so in the meantime, so with that, I'm just going to leave it at RGB for now. And I just want to jump down here. You'll see we have a background contents. You can either have it white, black. Um, you can also um, pick a background color if you choose. Uh, I typically just use white. Um, let's go down to this last part here, advanced options. This is important. Because what this is, it allows you to set a color profile. This is really important 
this is a, an advanced thing. Most people don't pay attention to this, but depending on the color profile that you have here will determine how your color will output. sRGB is something that's typically used for web work. I do not use this for my digital paintings. As a general I rule, what I give students is to just use Adobe RGB for now. I will go in depth later on and talk about color management, but for now, just use Adobe RGB. This color profile is going to allow you to convert the RGB colors at a later date to CMYK without much color shift. There will still be a little color shift, but it will have minimal. Okay. So once you have all these things set up, you just go ahead and hit create and you're good to go and you have your document. Okay, so we're in the early stages. We're going to keep pushing these through, uh, drop these every other day, if not every day. Uh, once we get past that, we'll be rolling. So um, if you want to stay with me, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell button below. And until next time, keep painting.